Hey, Chad here with Endless Food Systems. I want to show you today how to assemble an Eaton. So we're going to take one out of the box and put it together. Now actually everything that we're going to do today is covered in the owner's manual. But this is just a supplement video to help you see exactly how it goes together. This is our wire riser. Our seat pack. Water pump. Don't drink this. This is nitrifying bacteria. And all of your plumbing hoses. So I'm going to follow along with the instructions so that it all makes sense. Step one, I'm going to install the wire riser. Just lining up all these holes. This is our bowl. You can see there's two holes. We're going to put the hole that's odd away from us. So this is our water line to our pump. It already has the fitting on. There is no need for you to heat this up and force it on anymore. This is plenty tight. This goes down in the bottom to our water pump. This goes to the bottom of our bowl. This is our uh, drain line. This fits all the way down. Now it's important that you don't get any pebbles inside of here. That's why this cap is on. Okay, And occasionally you're going to need to clean this with a pipe cleaner or something. Put it in here and clean the crud out of it. This is a vent pipe that allows this to breathe and pull air down with it. But keep this cap on so you don't get pebbles in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach the pump because it will be a little bit easier. And then we just fit it up inside there. All right, this is our drain line. And this is kind of a multi-purpose thing. Normally, it attaches like this. And it simply threads up into that piece. And that's how it drains. But if you want to rinse your pebbles out, it's very, very easy if you just switch this in. This is just hand tight. Can attach it this way. And now you can see how it sticks over the edge. So now I can rinse my pebbles off and let this water run out uh, without having to move it. Pretty easy. Another easy way to rinse your pebbles is before you take them out of the bag, you can actually just take a knife and poke a bunch of small holes all around the bottom and sides of the bag, open it up, and run your water through the bag itself. That's going to rinse, the water's going to flow over the pebbles and carry the dirt out of the holes, and then you just reach your hand in there, stir the pebbles around while you're rinsing, and it doesn't take very long. It's an easy, easy way to rinse your pebbles out. Let them sit there for an hour or so after you're done, then you can carry them in and dump them in your system. So there's a couple of ways to do that. So a couple things that are in the bag here. This is a combination monitor. It's an ammonia monitor and a pH monitor. So you want to keep these in the fish tank all the time. And that's going to help uh, keep track of where you're at. 
it tells you on there when it's safe and fine. Now if your ammonia level rises too high, what you would need to do is replace some of your water. You want to take a couple of gallons out. That's really the only way you're going to decrease your ammonia level. Your pH on the other hand, if your pH gets above or say an 8.2 or higher, then what I would recommend is maybe about a, a teaspoon of distilled white vinegar. And see how that, that affects the system. Wait about 12 hours. If it didn't uh, decrease, add another teaspoon. Do it in very small amounts and over 12 hour or 24 hour periods because you don't want to shock the system. Now, if your pH is very low, say you're down at uh, the yellow area, 5.8 or something like that, and you want to raise the pH, that's, it's dangerous for your fish if you get too acidic. The way you would raise it is oyster shells, uh, which it's not a bad idea just to keep these in the system all the time. Or uh, if you still, if you have oyster shells in the system and your pH is still acidic, then what you'd want to do is add some baking soda or some lime. Actually, lime would be better. Uh, maybe a teaspoon or so. Check it again about 12 hours later. See how much it affected the system. Now what happens if the water becomes acidic, it eats away at those shells and it releases lime and calcium into your system and it'll pull your pH up. The natural pH of an oyster shell is around 7.4, so it will bring your system up to that level. It's a very easy and automatic way to keep it buffered up. Now this is cotton rope and uh, what you can do with this is cut a short piece bury the piece of cotton rope down to where it's going to pull or wick the water. It'll soak the water up to where you're going to start your seedling. So if you're going to um, just sprout a seed from here and it's dry at the outer edges, this is a way to wick the water up to where your seedling is going to get started. And then those roots will follow the cotton string down until your tap root is in the water all the time. Fantastic situation then you're good to go. This. Uh, this is a supplement bag. Basically, it's a mixture of several things we send with you to get your seedling started or to help your plants along. In a new system, in an in a immature aquaponic system, anything that's oh probably nine months or younger, you're going to be lacking some things. It takes a long time for the microbes to build up and for everything to be available to your, pl to your plants. So we send this with you uh, to get it started. You just want to take a small amount of this, just maybe a half a teaspoon or less, and you're going to mix this up in, in a water bottle or something and pour it directly on the roots of your plants or on your seedlings. You don't have to pour a lot of it on there, just a little bit, maybe on a weekly basis or even a, every couple of weeks, just to keep your plants healthy. It's not a bad idea to continue even after a, your system's mature to add maybe some azomite or some kelp, something like that, because they contain trace minerals that you can't get from anywhere else. Um, things that your body needs that's healthy for you and the plants. Not a bad idea to put some of that in there maybe once a month or so. Okay, so we've got our pebbles in the system. We've put our water in, hopefully a dechlorinated water or if you didn't have a way to uh, filter the chlorine out and you've let the system run for three or four days before you added any fish to it. And so we're ready now for plants. Now you can either uh, put your seeds in straight away and sprout them with the uh, cotton rope like we just talked about or you can take plants from a nursery and put them into the system that are already started or you can sprout your own. You just want to make sure and rinse off as much of the soil from the roots of the plant as possible. You don't want to bring in a bunch of dirt and put it in your system. It could clog things up. So, and you know, don't go crazy. You don't have to get every speck of dust or dirt off your, your roots of your plants. Just get the majority to off of there, put them in there. Another thing that you want to add is probably about 30 days or so after you've had your system running, 
very good idea to put some red worms into this. And what will happen, those red worms will take any fish waste that's uh, large and they'll break it down and turn it into plant food. They'll also take, um, if you have bigger plants and some leaves fall off or an old plant and, and uh, you've got to pull it out of the system and there's maybe some old roots are left in there, those worms will eat all that and they'll convert that into plant food. So you definitely want to put red worms in the system.